Okay, so for Web Design 1, the requirements for your website are pretty minimal. You have a custom hover domain like adr.inc or adri.inc. Andy, I hope I'm saying that right. That is, the files are hosted on Netlify, so we can get HTTPS and forms processing, which is right here. As for the content, we want to make sure that we have a bio. We have three or more portfolio items, a working contact form, and a 404 page just in case someone arrives at our website and, and a link is broken or something doesn't work, right? we have a way to let them know, hey, we've thought about you and you can always go back home. And so this is all good user experience and this is all good design. So those are the requirements for the website. Hover domain, hosted on Netlify, bio, three or more portfolio items, contact form, 404 page. Let's talk more about the requirements. Um, I've had some questions about what about a portfolio item, uh, the 404 page and the contact form and the bio are pretty straightforward, but what are the three or more portfolio items? So let's take a look at some past student examples. Again, these are examples from Web 2, Web 3, and what I want us to do is kind of look ahead and start planning for how it's going to look in future quarters. For Web 1, uh, you don't need this much level of detail, but there are things that you should be thinking about now and uh, hopefully you can get started on some of this stuff. What I want us to understand here is we all have a body of work. Uh, Aaron Griffiths was a uh, CS major actually, and he had a lot of code that he wanted to share. And I said, Aaron, give me a reason to look at your code. And he was like, what? So you can see here, here's a game that he made. Okay. And these are screenshots of the game and a description of the game. And what we're looking for here is but everyone has a body of work. So whether you made a game or whether you wrote a really good paper, um, if you're in TechCom, you wrote a great paper, give me a reason to read the paper. Give me a picture that accompanies the paper and then a short description and then a link to where I can download the paper. Um, if you have uh, any uh, in anybody in any of the sciences and you did a research report that you want that you should want, want to share with someone, um, give someone a reason to go learn more about that research report. Uh, notice these little animations right here. This is stuff that we'll be working on in Web 2. But uh, you can see here, here is one example of a student who really taken the concepts that we've used in Web 1, 2, and 3 and um, applied them. Um, Valerie is another person who has done the exact same thing. Uh, Valerie was a, uh, a part of the design program. Uh, she decided to put her resume up on her website, which is completely awesome. There's also the portfolio section here and she gives uh, more info about her work. So here is a, a, a UX designer, and you can get more details about the work. And so here's another great example of, I want to uh, uh, talk about my work, right? But a screenshot just won't do. Uh, Emily is a wonderful website. Uh, here we have uh, a project that we do in Web2 called the Google Drool. Emily's Google Doodle here is this is just a video of the actual Google Doodle itself. And the code is hosted on this version control service that we're going to be using in Web 2 and 3 called uh, GitHub. But here you can see the actual code to make this Google Doodle happen. So here is the completed version. Here is this actual source code that anybody could copy and paste. And here is a teaser or the cell or the, the promotion for this work. And this is how I need us to start thinking about it. our portfolios. Is it isn't so much here are screenshots of posters I made. Here are the reasons why I made these screenshots. I mean, here's the reason why I made these posters. Here are my challenges. And it gives us an opportunity to elaborate on our work versus Instagram and Dribbble and uh, any of the other services.